it's JP. I'm here to talk to you about my new book, A Woman at the Helm. Um, it's almost finished now, and uh, I'm just going through the the first read through of it. It is the second prequel to the Reaper series. Um, it follows a switch in time, more or less straight from where the switch left off, tracing the people in the 21st century and the people in the Victorian era um, watching their lives as they, they carry on after Switch left. So basically we have Alice Winter's chambers in the 21st century setting about all the things she needs to do in respect of the oncoming apocalyptical era during the Reaper series. And in the 1850s, we have Alice Chambers Winters, who is the original Alice, who is the girl who is going to be running her father's business. Basically, we jump five years so that John, her brother, is now out of his apprenticeship and has started building the motor for her father's boat. If you've read Switching Time, you'll understand about the boat and everything. And it's pointless me going on to great length because this is not a book that you can read as a one-off kind of thing. Um, so we basically jump five years and we carry on in both centuries not too much in the 21st century this time this is, you know um, that will be covered in the next book which is a date with the reaper um, what we've covered in this book is the what? onset the onset of Jamie Winters, who is sent back in time once again, um, again through a vortex, but this time he gets sent back to learn how to build the windmill and the watermill that he actually builds in the last book of the Reaper series. There's love interest for Jamie this time as a new character enters. She enters in the 15th century um, and re-enters in the 21st century through reincarnation. The book is, as I say, the middle section of the three prequels. It takes you nicely from the first one and will be delivering you to uh, basically the meaty part of the fir third book and last of the entire Reaper series because the next book that I do will be, uh, you know, a book three prequel, A Date with the Reaper. And that's it. That is then complete, finished. So, basically, you need to start with Reaper series book one. Atkinson's administration. In that book you meet most of the main characters that run throughout the story. Each book is you know relatively short. I think the longest one is like 220 pages. Um, but you meet the main Atkinson's. You meet Joe Hurst. You meet John Smith, Tamara, Sarah, Basically all of them. Paul Johnson, the, the policeman. It takes you... The, there's a police chase. There's everything, basically. I'm, I'm, so I've been told. In, in Atkinson's administration, there's everything. There's a police chase. There's, there's mystery. There's, you know, science. There's, you know, a touch of everything. Um, it ends 
quite dramatically. Um, I, I'm not going to go into the story because, you know, it, it's spoil it. Um, but it does end dramatically um, into book two, which is Atkinson's Armageddon. And true to the word, that book takes you as close to Armageddon as it's possible to do. Um, you go on a, a cruise, you meet up with all kinds of, you know, creatures, times, past times, times forward, um, and the love aspect on several levels is dealt with in that book. You move on to then the third book in that series, which is Atkinson's... I'm never forgetting now, look at that. <laughs> it's that long since the third book is Atkinson's Adversary. Now, the Reaper system has settled down by this time and it's running as it should, but an old enemy rears up. We get to enter the dark realm in, in this, uh, which is a nasty place. Um, characters come and characters go in this one. Um, it gets quite violent. It gets quite dark. We move on into Atkinson's Apprentice. In Atkinson's Apprentice, which is book four, a saviour child is born and he's born to help humanity. In it is basically a child of the gods conceived in the realm of nature. I'll not say who the mother and father are, because again, that's something you've got to find out in the book. Also, at the same time, another child is, shall we say, conceived or woken. Um, this is a different child. This is a creature from what some people would say mythology. But this creature always born a darling little mermaid is in actual fact the Kraken and the way things are going with humanity she is about to get called into action so on one side you've got Paladin who is the child of nature desperately trying to save humanity but waiting in the wings is Aquilia, who is the Kraken mermaid, waiting to bring on the apocalypse. We go into book five, Atkinson's Apocalypse, to find that humanity didn't sway Mother Nature into being saved. And the Kraken is in actual fact called into play. It doesn't take long for her to do her stuff. And seven billion people on the planet discover how hard nature can be. The end of humankind is upon us in this book. It is the darkest book in the series. We then go from there to Atkinson's Absolution. I don't end the story where, you know, an odd few are saved and that's it. I take you along with the odd few that are saved. And humanity has to begin again. 
but it has to find completely new ways to begin as all technology has been removed. There just isn't any technology whatsoever. And we see how they get on, which brings me back to the story that I'm writing, because in that book, that is where old technology is rebuilt, reborn, windmills, water mills, old fashioned tools, working with your hands. And one of the characters from that last book, Jamie Winters, is sent back to the actual times when those things were built and he is taught by the masters of, tr of their trades back in the time when they were the only technology. So, all being well, by summer you will be reading how we progressed as a woman at the helm will be published. So, this has also been my first try with this new technology. Whee! <laughs> this green screen thing of a bob. So, let me know what you think. And I'll see you in the next one. Be happy. <laughs>